I want to know what you're recommending. It sounds to me like what some of you are saying the librarians should decide who gets to see that book. I'm saying when you're making, when individual parents are allowed to make a decision of what, where that line is and to kill a mockingbird, which involves a rape scene, should that book be pulled from our libraries? I think it becomes a slippery well, slope. I think you ought to think about it a little bit more before you come here. I've thought about if Senator. If you're going to propose something, you ought to be able in 30 seconds to be able to explain what Senator, you're asking us to do. Tell me what you want, who gets to decide. And all I've heard is the librarians. And parents have nothing to do with it. And if that's your response, what planet did you just parachute in from? Parents, Senator. Or what country, more appropriately? This is not China. Parents, Senator, for all due respect, parents absolutely have a say. My parents were immigrants, came to this country. We never checked out books without our parents seeing what what books we were reading. They encouraged us to Mr. read Mr. Secretary, books. I understand this is good for your politics back home. It's got nothing to do with my I'm politics. Not, no, my bill is passed. Of course it does. My it every, has passed. everything to do with your I'm here, politics. I'm here to... But you came here with a problem, and I'm trying to understand the solution, and you don't have one. We solved the solution. Other than, we solved other than, the solution Other than Illinois. to tell us that we don't agree with you, you're on the wrong, we'll be on the wrong side of history. We so I, I confess I'm a little confused, and I appreciate the argument that, that we've, or discussion that we've been having, but for me, it's a little too conceptual or, I don't know, metaphysical or the, theological or whatever you want to call it. I want to try to understand what you're asking us to do. Let's take two books that have been much discussed. The first one is called All Boys Aren't Blue, and I will quote from it. I put some lube on and got him on his knees, and I began to slide into him from behind. I pulled out of him and kissed him while he masturbated. He asked me to turn over while he slipped a condom on himself. This was my <laughs> and I was struggling to imagine someone inside me. He got on top and slowly inserted himself into me, it was the worst pain I think I have ever felt in my life. Eventually, I felt a mix of pleasure with the pain. Close quote. All boys aren't blue. The second is a, a, another much discussed book. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's called Gender Queer. Let me read an excerpt from that. Quote, I got a new strap-on strap harness today. I can't wait to put it on you. It will fit my favorite dildo perfectly. You're going to look so hot. I can't wait to have your in my mouth. I'm going to give you the of your life, then I want you inside of me." End quote. Now, Mr. Secretary, what are you asking us to do? Are you suggesting that only librarians should decide whether the two books that I just referenced should be available to kids? Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. Tell me what you're saying. Well, uh, first of all, th there's this... Don't give me a speech. Tell me what you're asking will, me to do. With all due respect, Senator, and, uh, the words you spoke are disturbing, especially coming out of your mouth is very disturbing. But I would, I would also tell you that... We're not advocating for kids to read porn, to Senator Booker's what point. What are you advocating for? We are advocating for parents, random parents, not to have the ability, under the guise of keeping kids safe, to try and challenge the world view of every single manner on these issues. You're getting conceptual game. I'm what not getting conceptual. Well, I'm yes, saying you that are. Yes, you are. Professor Goodwin, help me understand your point of view. Um, I think this is a yes or no question. Do, do you support um, it being legal to abort an unborn uh, child up to the moment of birth? Senator Kennedy, it is not a yes or no question. I support women like Ms. Zorowski. Women no, across this No, ma'am, I, I don't, 
I, I, I think it is a yes or no question. No, well, if, let me if, answer. If there were a law, that's, I'm just trying to understand your perspective, and I'm not accusing you of this. Of course but, not. But, 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 you know, people sort of talk around this issue. If there were a bill that said that a, a woman has an unfettered right to abort an unborn baby for any reason up to the moment of birth, would you vote yes or would you vote no? Senator Kennedy, I refuse to be shackled by your question. You, what I have answered is that there are conditions you, that you, you occur during pregnancy. You don't know whether pregnancy. you would vote yes or no? There are conditions during pregnancy that mean after 10 weeks, no, 14 I said unf weeks, I said 20 weeks, discretion. 24 weeks, you, you conditions would, you such would as support, Ms. Zorowski. You're here advocating. I would support, I would support her life. You, why, why doesn't the Justice Department support stop, question, and frisk? I'm not sure what stop. You, you mean stop and frisk? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, some call yeah, it stop yeah. and frisk. Look, Harry stop, v. Ohio. Yeah, we, uh, I don't know that the Justice Department has a position. These, this is a state and local um, uh, role normally. Um, look, Do you think stop, it works? I'm sorry? Do you think stop, question, and frisk works? I think in some circumstances it can work, but of course it can be abused. Right. Yeah. Um, what, but why doesn't the Justice Department aggressively encourage law enforcement officials to use that technique? It's been declared constitutional, as you know. Yeah, it, the Supreme Court has uh, affirmed the constitutionality of stop and frisk. That's in the Terry case. That's exactly right. But we don't do that. Uh, the federal government doesn't do patrolling. This is work for patrolling. I, I know you don't, but you're one of the country's chief law enforcement officials, maybe the chief, and what you say matters. Well, what, and what, suppose, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Let's take Chicago, where you haven't, we haven't made any inroads in stopping the killing. I mean, Chicago is now the world's largest outdoor shooting range. Uh, we know that a lot of the shootings come from gangs. Why wouldn't you want to call the police chief and the mayor in Chicago and say, look, you know who these gang members are. When you have reasonable suspicion under Terry v. Ohio, an objective standard, more than just a hunch, why don't you aggressively stop, question, and frisk these gang members? You get guns off the street. You'll get drugs off the street, and you'll get a lot of gang members off the street, and you'll stop people killing each other. Why won't you do that? Uh, the best way for the federal government to stop violent crime is to work at each local level and determine and let the, the state and locals determine what the best use of their own Judge, resources I'm sorry, is. 